who support governors who want to transit from being heads of executive to come over and assist us in oversight and legislation. Because we gain a lot from the experience that has been gained uh, uh, from counties where there have been heads of executive. And I've also seen this personally. I serve in the Committee of Health uh, on many occasions when we have had county visits with uh, Senator Mandago. And having had the benefit of having a chair in the last Senate, who was not a former governor, I've seen the valuable experience uh, that becomes very useful for us as senators when we visit uh, counties. So I want to urge governors who are retiring and who think they are still energetic, who, who, who feel that uh, they have some, uh, something to still offer to the country, not to shy, but to offer themselves, vie for uh, positions to Senate, and uh, come here and make a contribution. I think uh, I will, uh, Senator Ali Rob and Senator Mandago will agree that they have found it very interesting. We may not have the money that uh, governors have, but we also make a contribution that uh, tends to improve uh, what happens in, in our counties. And this happens all over. I, I saw a bill, Madam Speaker, uh, that was proposing that we should bar governors not to run for senatorial positions or member of national assembly. I personally don't support. Let us compete. If uh, you have an, had an experience as a senator for two terms and the people of uh, uh, Tana River, where Mungatana comes from, want him to take the, the experience he has gained as a, a legislature to being governor. Why not? Why should we stop uh, Senator Mungatana from transiting to becoming governor of Tana River? And equally even for myself, Madam Speaker, if the time comes and the people of Nyamira tell me they want me to transit from being a senator to becoming a governor, we should not stop anybody. Let the people uh, decide. Coming back to the report, Madam Speaker, it is, uh, it, it's unfortunate, Madam Speaker, that implementations of projects spearheaded by a government can stall. And uh, that's a big indictment on us as a country. Madam Speaker, because if you travel to many jurisdictions, projects initiated, implemented by governments should never stall. <laughs> because, Madam Speaker, if government lacks money, then it, it, it means the country is bankrupt. You know, in, in many uh, civilized jurisdictions, if a government begins construction of a road, construction of a bridge, it is uh, uh, the presumption is that the government has money to complete the project. It's really a shame, Madam Speaker, when I look at this report, that some of these uh, projects were launched <laughs> as way back as 2015. Imagine, that's uh, in, in another year, next year, that will be 10 years. And then the third part is that we have sunk money into a project and we are having a report that says some of these projects have been abandoned. It's a big, big indictment on our, on our country. And Mr. S Madam Speaker, this money uh, comes from uh, taxpayers. Some of them are struggling, you know. They, 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 they get taxed knowing that the government will put into good use uh, the money that uh, uh, has gone into... Uh, Kenya Revenue Authority. I think it's not uh, uh, a very good uh, statement on our performance, and I hope the recommendations that have been put forth by the Committee of Finance will uh, make us realize. Our joy as a senator is uh, to see that uh, this process that was midwife by the Senate, because those motions came here, they were passed by the House, money was sent to counties. Our joy should be that we go to these counties, we go to Isiolo, we go to Arakanithi, and see those projects being launched. Then we feel proud as uh, senators. But Madam Speaker, when these projects are stalled, and when you look at the reasons, it's a shame. If you read page 19, uh, the CS said that some of the challenges that were faced included, one, 
issues dealing with supervision, <coughs> issues dealing with a lack of good management uh, of the projects, bureaucracies uh, arising from project implementation mod model. This should never happen, Madam Speaker, because when you are uh, designing a project, uh, you must uh, input how you will supervise that project so that you are able to complete it within uh, the projected contract uh, period. How can our counties be telling us 12 years into devolution, that they have inadequate capacity at counties to supervise projects. Okay? I, I don't think uh, those are excuses that we can take as a uh, Senate. Even uh, the excuse of lack of, of, of funds from national government uh, should not be convincing. I can give you an example, Madam Speaker. Our county headquarters in Yamira, we are still being housed by the county commissioner. The county headquarters uh, that were launched by our late governor, Mze John Yagarama, have not been completed to date. And this idea of a governor who takes over from a, a, an outgoing governor, uh, not wanting to complete projects that were commenced or initiated by his predecessor, is something that should not, be, 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 uh, that you know, should not happen in government. We have what we call uh, success, succession in government. There is what we used to call, uh, Madam Speaker, perpetual succession in government. When you come on board and you find a project that was being initiated by your predecessor, you continue with it. Even this financial year, Madam Speaker, in my own county of Nyamira, the allocation is a paltry 30 million to complete the county headquarters, meaning that the current governor is not giving that uh, project a priority because it was initiated by the previous governor, the late Johnny Agarama. And at times, this leaves room for speculation. I have no evidence at all. But when you put your ears on the ground, uh, people will tell you that uh, the commission, hmm? the commission was given to the other administration. So I need to commence my own projects uh, so that I get uh, something. Already, we are breaking ground for an industrial park. We, as a county, want to pump 250 million to the industrial park. Why, <laughs> Madam Speaker, our county headquarters remain unfinished for over 10 years? Doesn't make uh, economic sense. If I was the governor in office, I would have prioritized, Madam Speaker, completing the county headquarters, uh, Madam Speaker, and then maybe another uh, governor who, who succeeds me can initiate the county headquarters, Madam Speaker, and then allocate more money there. Our stadium, Manga Stadium, uh, remains again uh, incomplete. It's like a stalled project. And, and all this boils into the issue of a governor who takes over saying, I'll not complete projects that were initiated by a previous uh, administration. It's not the good thing, Madam Speaker. I've seen roads in my county that were launched by our retired president, uh, Uru Mugai Kibaki. I've not seen President William Ruto saying, because those roads were launched by uh, our former president, he will not continue those projects. We took over at, at, at PSC. We found Bunge Towers. Bunge Towers was launched when uh, Marende was a uh, speaker. Uh, th those days, I think, when Mungatano was in, in National Assembly, uh, uh, retired uh, Speaker Muturi continued for his te two tenures as Speaker, Chairman of PSC. We came in and we gave it priority. We, we, find, we, completed, we completed it and members are now occupying it. So I plead with the Chair of Finance to impress our governors to give priority to projects that we have, where money has already been uh, spent, substantial amount of money has been spent. All they need is to just put a substantial budget, they finalize the project, and, and, and life continues. So, Madam Speaker, if you go to Machakos, you, you, you will see what uh, Governor Mutua did. He did beautiful county headquarters. When you go to 
mature because you feel proud. You see fruits of devolution. That's, that's how devolution should be uh, working. You, you just see it and you say, yes, these are the county headquarters of uh, Machakos. In fact, you went further and even did some sub-county headquarters. You go to Matu, uh, you will find that uh, Governor Mutua did another sub-county headquarters for the county government of Machakos. Why can't uh, Isiolo, Nyandarua, Verakanidhi, do something and complete their county headquarters. Why can't Nyamira, Madam Speaker, 12 years into devolution, not have a county headquarters? When the GNZs demonstrated on Tuesday, they, were, they went to that building, occupied it, and they were demanding that we want this building to be completed. What a shame to us as leaders. What a shame to our colleagues who are governors. How can GNZs be demonstrating, demanding that project should be completed, launched, so that they can be proud uh, members of those counties. We need to call out our governors and urge them to put aside this issue of uh, you must get something, your hands must be greased before you finish a project. That is not what uh, should uh, inspire leadership. Leadership is transformative, Madam Speaker. If you do a county headquarters for Nyandara, for Isiolo, for China River, that's posterity. Future generations will remember that uh, Senate Governor so and so is the one who left behind this beautiful county headquarters. We remember Kibaki for Thika Highway. We will remember President Uru for the expressway. Maybe President Uru will also do something. We will remember him. You as a governor, what do you want to be remembered for? My governor in Yamira, what do you want to be remembered for? That Genesis came to demonstrate against you? No. You should be remembered that you took over four years into your administration, you did something. If there is no Manga Stadium, there is no county headquarters, what will the people of Nyamira remember you for? So, Madam Speaker, I want to commend the Chair, and I want to encourage him to have a further discussion with IGTRC to give priority uh, to, for, for, to uh, governors of these five respective counties to prioritize these projects, complete them, and as a good uh, way of appreciating our chairman, they complete this project while he's still senator. Uh, I know people of Mandera may give him a second term. But it will be a good thing if they can finalize these projects during his first tenure as chair of uh, finance and budget. And then he can invite us to go and uh, open uh, these projects. This idea, this, this uh, you know, uh, mark, marking scheme, does not reflect very well on us as a country. Madam Speaker, we have so many grants that go to our counties. Uh, like me, I'm we are receiving about 150 million to support agriculture. But if the report we have is that uh, counties that don't have capacity to implement projects, how will our donors be encouraged to give us money, Madam Speaker? I really want to plead to our friends uh, chief executives in counties to style up, uh, transform our counties, Madam Speaker, complete our hospitals, do our roads. Uh, I don't think we came up with counties so that we can just have marams. I also want to walk to my county of Nyamira, Madam Speaker, and uh, tell my people that my governor, whom I worked so hard to ensure that he gets money from Nairobi, has done even five kilometers of tarmac, Madam Speaker. We don't want to go to counties and all that we can see is, is Maram. What you are seeing in these county headquarters is replicated in water projects, Madam Speaker. You go to a county, I, I was looking through the audit report from Nyamira, Madam Speaker, you find beautiful uh, projects identified. You'll be, you are told the, government, the county government will do 20 balls, one in each ward, in our 20 wards. But when the auditor is uh, doing an assessment, he says there was no proper use of money. There was no value for money for the people of Nyamira because the balls were sunk, but no electricity was connected, no solar, no piping to homes. And he returns a verdict and says there was no value for money for the people of, of Nyamira. He says a project called Nyandoche, Nyandoche Vire in uh, Nyanshongo Ward was drilled, but nothing happened. 
it's a ghost project. You go to another uh, uh, project in, in, in the same uh, sub-county, Madam Speaker, you find the same report. 17 million spent, no pipe, pipe no connection of uh, uh, pipes to homes, no value for the people of Nyamira. Madam Speaker, if you drill a borehole, connect pipes to homes, tell the people that have supplied you water, support me to sustain the project by paying for the water you are co consuming. That's the only way, Madam Speaker, devolution will have a meaning to our people. And those, who, those governors who are engaging in uh, taking kickbacks, who don't want to complete projects by uh, predecessors, like projects started by uh, Senator Captain Ali Roba, it's a shame. Madam Speaker, it's a shame. And the GNZ has shown us that uh, they can knock on our doors, Madam Speaker. They, can, they have demonstrated that they want to put the bar very high for governance. These guys want results, Madam Speaker. They want results. So our governor should style up, uh, don't put pro uh, kickbacks as a priority, complete projects for our people so that we can transform this country. With those remarks, Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you, Senator. Senator Adilo. Roba, the mover of the motion, please reply.